Okay, good morning, seventh grade students. Um, today is Wednesday, October 7th, 2020, and let's get started. Again, make sure you have your math notebook and a writing utensil, and we'll begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let nothing disturb you, nothing frighten you. All things are passing. God never changes. Patience obtains all things. Nothing is wanting to him who possesses God. God alone suffices. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so here is your warm-up for today. Go ahead and pause the video, solve these three problems, and um, when you're finished, you can start the video again. Okay, welcome back. Uh, let's go ahead and solve the warm-up problems. So the first problem um, was to simplify the square root of 18. 18 is not a perfect square. And so like we learned yesterday, we need to think about what factors of 18 are perfect squares. And this one um, can be written, rewritten as nine times two. 18 is the same as nine times two, and nine is a perfect square. And so then now I'm gonna write this as the square root of nine times the square root of two. The square root of nine is three times the square root of two. And I can't simplify it any further. Two is a prime number. That's the answer. Okay, number two asks, is the square root of 18 rational or irrational? Well, if I go back and look at the square root of 18, again, the first thing I, I looked at when I, or thought when I looked at that is it's not a perfect square. And remember, any number, any um, square root that's not a perfect square is irrational. So this is an irrational, oh gosh, I can't spell this morning, number. Okay, or you could have just done an I for irrational. Okay, number three is to simplify an expression using order of operations. We're gonna do lots of these this year. And so to solve this problem, I need to start, first of all, inside any parentheses that I have. And so I'm going to simplify this five minus one. And as I solve this problem, I'm gonna to continue to write out the entire problem, write out every step. Um, really important to do that so that number one, a teacher who might be looking at um, your work can, tell, can see where you made a mistake if you did. And number two, it helps you to keep from getting confused as what you've done and what you haven't done. So three to the second power plus two times, five minus one is four minus 10. And now I'm going to do all of my exponents. So, so three to the second power is nine plus two times four to the second power is 16 minus 10. And then now I'm going to multiply and divide from left to right. So nine plus two times 16 is 32 minus 10. And then the last step is to add and subtract from left to right. So nine plus 32 is 41 minus 10 is 31. So the answer to that problem is 31. If you have any questions on any of these uh, warm-up problems, be sure and um, talk to your tutor about them this afternoon. And let's get started on today's lesson. Okay, so um, again, our essential question for the week hasn't changed. We are exploring the Pythagorean theorem. And the great news is, is today we're finally going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So uh, Monday and Tuesday, we're kind of building some background knowledge and um, a couple of skills that we needed to be able to solve these problems. And so today, we are going to find the missing length of a right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. And then we're also going to determine whether a triangle is a right triangle. Both those um, objectives we accomplished by using the Pythagorean theorem and the things that we've learned about um, simplifying non-perfect square roots. Okay, so um, the first thing that we're going to do is talk about um, what the Pythagorean theorem is. So this is something that you'll probably um, learn more about the details around how the formula came to be when you take a geometry class in college, or not in college, in high school. Um, so we're not gonna talk about how the, the formula became, you know, came to be, but we're gonna talk about the, the elements of the formula. And so the Pythagorean theorem, Um, only applies 
two right triangles, okay? And a right triangle is a triangle that has a 90 degree angle in it. Um, and when you see triangles drawn, the way that um, we in math will determine or, or signify that a triangle is a right triangle is by putting that little box in the corner of the right angle, okay? Um, that's, that basically tells you this is a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem then, if we talk about the sides of the triangle, the, the longest side, okay, so the longest side is always going to be opposite the 90 degree angle, okay, so it's directly across, directly across from that 90 degree angle, okay, I'm going to write that down, you should put that in your notes. And um, we call it the hypotenuse. So the longest side of a right triangle is called the hypotenuse. It's across from the 90 degree angle, it's across from the right angle. And in the Pythagorean theorem, we call that side C, okay? Which you'll see here in a second. The other two sides in my triangle, let me do those in, whoops, in blue. Oh my goodness, what is going on here? Let's get out of that. There we go. Uh, let's go there. Okay, so the other two sides, we're gonna call A and B, okay? So sides A and B in a right triangle are called the legs. Okay, so A and B are the legs of the triangle and the hypotenuse is the longest side. And those, um, the sides um, A and B are the two legs, you, it doesn't matter which one's which. You don't have to say that A is a shorter side, B is the longer side. They just, they're the two legs. They're the two sides that are shorter than the hypotenuse. The only one that we have to have um, for sure is that the longest side is called C. Okay, and so the Pythagorean theorem says, if I have right triangle A, B, C, the length of side A squared plus the length of side B squared is equal to the length of the hypotenuse squared. That's it. Okay, now again, the important thing is, is that this only works for right triangles. If you don't have a right triangle, you can't use the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So we're gonna solve a few problems um, using the Pythagorean theorem. And so the problems today are all about looking at a triangle where I know two of the sides and I wanna find the third side. And so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to do that. So if I have triangle, um, and this side is three, this side is four, I don't know what C is. I don't know the, the hypotenuse side. And so I can use a Pythagorean theorem to find that. And so I'm going to say, well, the Pythagorean theorem says A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So three squared plus four squared is equal to C squared. And now I'm going to solve it. So three squared is nine plus four squared is 16 equals c squared. 9 plus 16 is 25 is equal to c squared. So we talked earlier this week about how the square root is the inverse operation to the square. Just like when we try to solve problems, um, if I had an equation that had um, like x plus 1 equals 4, well, this is an addition equation, and so to solve that, I would subtract. So addition and subtraction are inverse operations. Same thing with um, the square and the square root. And so in order to solve for C over here, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. The square root of C squared is C. The square root of 25 is 5. 
And so now I found my length of side C. Okay, let's try another one. Let's look at this triangle. I've got a right triangle again. I know this leg is eight, the hypotenuse is 17, and then I have side B here, and I don't know what the length of side B is. So I'm gonna use the uh, Pythagorean theorem to solve that. And remember, Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And if you want to on your picture, you can label, well, if this is B, I'm gonna call this A and the C. The longest side has to be C. Okay, so if you have a, you can't just randomly decide that you want A and B to be 8 and 17. The longest side is always going to be C. And so now if I plug in to my formula, I've got 8 squared plus B squared, because I don't know what B is yet, is equal to 17 squared. 8 squared is 64 plus B squared. Okay, 17 squared, again, this is why we've got to memorize those bigger um, perfect squares. 17 squared is 289. And if you don't remember it, just write it out. You could solve it and type 17 times 17. And so now to get B by itself, I'm gonna subtract 64. So B squared equals 225. Take the square root of both sides. B is equal to the square root of 225, which is also a perfect square, which is 15. Okay. So that's what we're doing. That's, um, that's the main thing that we're doing today. Um, the problems in your homework, here, well, actually we're gonna do one more here because some of them don't come out quite so nice. So let's do this one. Let's do, um, this side is eight, this side is 20, and that side is, we're gonna call it C. And so I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem again. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Eight squared plus 20 squared equals C squared. Well, eight squared is 64. B squared, 20 squared is 400 equals C squared. So 464 equals C squared. So if I take the square root of both sides, the square root of um, 464 is C. This one's a tough one because the numbers are pretty big. And so now we've got two options and it's gonna depend on what you're asked in the problem. Um, typically if it's a word problem and you end up with an answer like this, you can use your calculator and just round it. Um, if it's not a word problem, you're probably going to be asked to answer, to give your answer in simplest radical form. And so now we've got a factor. And so for me, the easiest way to figure out perfect squares on such a big number like this is um, to try a couple of factors. I look at this one and with 464, I think four might go into it. So I'm going to check. So four into 464 leaves me with one. And four goes in one time there. 6, 116. So I know the square root of 464 is going to be 4 times 116. And I can solve that to say square root of 4 times the square root of 116. So 2 times the square root of 116. But I don't think I'm done yet. Now I look at 116 and I think, you know what, I think 4 might go into that again. And so I'm going to try and divide again. And I'm gonna say, okay, well, does four go into 116? Four goes into 11, two times is eight, 36. Yes, it goes in nine times. So now I've got two times the square root of four times the square root of 29. Well, the square root of four is two. So two times two, times the square root of 29, I'm gonna move over here, which is four times the square root of 29. And now I'm confident 29 is a prime number, I can't factor it at all, 
And so I'm done. Okay. All right, that is, that's probably about the hardest problem you're going to see. Um, and the main, again, at looking at it, it's like the main part, the thing that makes that hard is that simplifying that square root. And these problems, a lot of times when you get bigger numbers, it's guess, you have to just try different factors and see, um, see what works, okay? I'm not sure that you have any in your homework that are that complicated, but, I, but you do need to know how to solve those. We'll be doing them again later in the year, and you're going to see these come up in um, algebra next year quite a bit too. Okay, so that was solving for the missing side of a right triangle. The second part of today's lesson is determining if a triangle, if a triangle is a right triangle. And so what we, if we have the Pythagorean theorem here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, what that tells us is, well, we can find a missing side, but we could also, if we have all three sides, we could plug in the, the numbers and see if we get a true statement. And if we get a true statement, it's a right triangle. If we get a false statement, it's not a right triangle. So let's look at a couple of examples. So the first example is, um, I want to know if I have a triangle with side A equals five, B equals four, or I'm sorry, not A equals five. Let's start over here. A equals three, B equals four, and C equals five. Is it a right triangle? We actually solved this one a minute ago, so it's going to work, but let's go through it anyway. So to check, I'm going to plug into the Pythagorean theorem. And I say, well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. 9 plus 16 equals 25. 25 equals 25. Yes, true. OK, so since I got a true statement, the answer is yes. Okay, let's try another one. What if I'm given the sides A equals 5, B equals 5, and C equals 8? I want to know, is it a right triangle? So let's plug in to the Pythagorean theorem. Let's do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 5 squared plus 5 squared equals 8 squared. 5 squared is 25. 5 squared is 25. 8 squared is 64. 25 plus 25 is 50 equals 64. Is that true? Does 50 equal 64? No, not true. I'm going to put a little line through my equal sign that says it's not true. And so is it a right triangle? The answer is no. So you've got, um, I think you've got four or five problems where you're solving for a missing side in your homework, and then four or five problems where you're doing this, where you're given all three sides and you have to say, is it a right triangle or not? And this is how you do that. You plug it into the formula and solve it. And um, if you get a true statement, yes, it's a right triangle. If you get a false statement, then no, it's not a right triangle. Okay, so that is our lesson. Let's talk about the homework. Okay, so your homework is a worksheet. You need to do all of the problems on the worksheet. Um, I also want you to think now about how you feel about today's lesson. It was quite a bit of information today. Um, two big concepts, solving for a missing side and then determining whether a triangle is a right triangle. So those are the two big pieces that I want you to think about how you feel about this lesson. Um, if you're confused about anything, talk to your tutor this afternoon about those. Um, do your homework assignment and I will look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow morning. And let's close in prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great afternoon.